Six People, One Crisis. These six men and women from different corners of the world represent a tiny cross-section of the millions who were touched by the economic tsunami which swept the world, engulfing nations and wrecking lives. Two out of our six subjects have lost their livelihoods. The International Labour Organization estimates that the number of unemployed globally could increase by almost 60 million this year compared with two years ago. Take Francais Picard, a single mother struggling to survive in Haiti, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. She relied on money sent from her cousin Claude Bruno to feed, clothe and educate her two daughters. Claude works over a thousand miles away in New Jersey, washing dishes to keep himself and his relatives. But he was forced to drastically reduce the money he sent to cousin Picard after his hours were cut. Now, Picard and her two daughters face possible homelessness and an uncertain future. I hardly sleep at night. After midnight, I lie awake for the rest of the night because of all the worries running through my mind. Sometimes I wonder what I will give the children for breakfast. They need their packed lunch, but there wasn't a penny left in my wallet when I went to bed. Just a few miles from where Picard's cousin works is Wall Street, America's financial heartland. Arguably, it was here that it all started. Here that some arcane Wall Street financial instruments magnified a mortgage crisis into a credit crunch, which then evolved into a full-blown economic emergency. Hundreds of thousands working in financial services, people like Sheetal Patel, lost their jobs and with it, a sense of their own identity. Almost immediately after I got laid off from Morgan Stanley, I went out and as soon as I met some new people, they asked me anything about myself. I realized that my only answer ever was that I was an economist at Morgan Stanley and now I really had an identity crisis of who am I if I'm not an economist at Morgan Stanley? What do I really have to offer? Santiago Beina, a Spanish realtor, also has much to offer, that is, an excess of properties to sell. But in his words, the market isn't cold, it's frozen. After decades of rising house prices in Spain, values have fallen off the cliff. The crisis has affected everything. The market is not cold, it's frozen. Those on lower incomes have been hardest hit. They cannot afford to pay the mortgages they sign and defaults soon start. As well as rising defaults, another major fallout from the global economic crisis was a dramatic decline in commodity prices. Some commodities, like cocoa, managed to buck the trend. But even here, against the background of the global slump, small-scale producers, like Ignaz Coffee Cassie in Côte d'Ivoire, worried about the long-term sustainability of their industry. Cocoa farmers in Côte d'Ivoire work with machete and woes. No modernization has taken place here. Even when a farmer needs to buy a new machete, he finds that the price has tripled. Most of these products come from abroad. Add to that, there are no subsidies for farmers. Farmers want to know when they will see an end to their suffering. And suffering too were all those who had connections to the export industry, whether manufacturers, traders or shippers. Over the last year and a half, there's been an almost unprecedented drop in global trade. Even those only indirectly linked to this critical sector felt its effects. Among them, Gustavo Ramirez, an Argentinian port worker whose working hours were slashed as fewer containers passed through the port of Buenos Aires. I've noticed a reduction in the work and the number of days we can go to work. The number of hours we work has changed a lot. Before, we used to work an average of 20, 24 days, and now we're an average of 14, 15 days. The company says there has been a reduction in production volume since the start of the global crisis, and that the crisis has caused a necessary reduction in the work. Six lives, one crisis then. The stories of our interviewees illustrate that the real price of the recession has been the human cost it's exacted. The fallout will carry on even beyond the recovery of the markets, as millions continue to lose their jobs next year and perhaps beyond that. In Japan, for example, unemployment rates have already hit record highs, and with it, homelessness and dislocation. 
The last words then go to Yoshinori Sato, a former employee at a Japanese car plant whose hopes of bringing his family to live with him in his city of employment were dashed when he received a redundancy note. All I wanted was to become a full time employee, and I'd tried to show that I was a good employee by coming into the office one hour earlier every morning. I did that for five years. All I ever wanted was to lead a normal life. I don't want luxuries. Then I was given that notice, and my dream was shattered.